Guess what show many it is, boys? It's not 69. It's 68. Next week is 69. I still got, I still got that story sitting here waiting. It's been I here got, for how, weeks. How fitting at Minnesota 69 will be on the week we end Ed Gein? Perfect. Not fitting at all, actually. Terrible. It's very fitting. Truly Incredibly terrible. Fitting. An unhealthy sexual appetite juxtaposed <laughs> with a very, very healthy one. Get ready. Exactly. <laughs> right. We bring the balance. We're bringing the balance. Yeah. And like real sex, it's shorter than you think in the mini soap. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know what the hell uh, you're talking I'm about. I hope you guys brought some fun stuff because I brought something people have been <laughs> talking about for like all week. I'm sure you guys are. I don't know if any of you brought this. The um, Pandora Papers. The what? The Pandora Papers. No, no, not the pan. That's another one. That's another that one. I'm no, still kind of is... waiting for it to sort of land before I uh, meet. Yeah. Report on it. Good call. I'm talking more true crime. A cold oh. case team fully believes they have identified the infamous Zodiac killer. Have you been oh, yes. reading in this stuff? Yeah. I'm, here's the thing, though. The thing that was funny to me about this is that the FBI was like. We got nothing new to report. Yeah. Yeah. This is a bunch of people outside the FBI a team of cold case people have been working on the case for a while. And it's it's of, I'm of the opinion that it's possible they're right, but they it's still are, not. They are just to be clear. They are like law enforcement officers and yeah, investigators sorry. they are yeah. just not working in an official capacity just to make mm -hmm. it clear it's not just like a bunch of hobbyists that are yeah. saying this i mean they are doing it as a hobby but these are the people that might solve the zodiac murder you know what i mean yeah so according to a press release they dropped the organization known as the case breakers has recovered new physical and forensic evidence which they say indicates that the zodiac killer was a man by the name of gary francis post who passed away in 2018. One particular clue, which one member of the team called irrefutable, is that their suspect sported a unique scar on his forehead that just so happened to match what four eyewitnesses reported in their observations of the killer. Additionally, the group has also secured decades of pictures from Post's former darkroom that they believe strengthens their case, including an eerie 1980 selfie that appears to show the shadow of a person wearing the unsettling Zodiac hood that the killer donned during one of his murders. Um, like more tangential evidence is that weird Facebook post of this guy who was apparently friends with this with Gary. And in that Facebook post is him in with four selfies of, of him. He's like, I miss this old man. Zodiac question mark. Miss ya. And like, it's this weird like. Yeah, Maybe there's uh, there's he, posts from him, too, that are creepy, yeah, right? Movie review posts that claim like Ted Bundy was overrated and he makes like hints that it's he's the Zodiac in all of his movie reviews. It's Fucking creepy if it's true. Fascinating regardless if it's not. Yeah. Like, Wasn't there something weird. about like it's like if you know his full legal name, you can like get an alternate solution to the ciphers or something? Yeah. So apparently his name was the cipher key. If these are to be believed, if these case breakers were to be believed and it gives you an entirely different message. But it like one that confirms it was him. Yeah, I was about to say, like, if we have the name, then it should be easy just to decipher the messages, right? My, they, my, they said they did. And they said they get, the name does decipher it and you get a different message from it. And his name was the key to the to the to the whole thing. And my, it's bizarre. My thing it's is that cryptography is complex to figure out, mm -hmm. but it's not hard to explain. Like if you solved it and you've got the message that's this message. There should be no nothing blocking you from just explaining that. I guess maybe they're trying to sell it. You know, I guess maybe they're maybe. trying to like get a book deal or something. I don't know. I wouldn't but be surprised if they're trying to. It just seems to me like if you're going to say, yo, we fucking solved it irrefutably. We got the evidence like show the like, get, like you know, yeah. if, if this guy's name solves the cipher. Right. Shouldn't anybody now be able to do this? I imagine so. It's not like a mysterious type of cipher, like somebody else solved one of his ciphers, right? Yeah. Like, I don't know. This is this is I mean, this news is only a couple days old at this point. So I haven't beyond the claims. I haven't really seen if anybody's put the cipher to the test at all or anything. Yeah, um, it's just a weird like if it's true. I mean, I'm, I've been, I think wanting, I've been wanting to do a Zodiac episode and every time that I want to do it, another guy comes out. That's like yep. it was me like within like a month of me deciding maybe my next one's going to be the Zodiac. Uh, a, th a thing comes out that's like a guy like actually my father was the Zodiac and he died mm -hmm. or something like that. And so far they just kind of like come out and then and they just kind of go away. And I'm 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 interested to see what happens with this one. Yeah, I mean, it's smart probably to wait this one out, see if anything gets confirmed or denied, if it's another one that it goes disappears by the wayside. 
Maybe the FBI will never confirm it. Maybe they don't want somebody independent. They were like, figured we it got out. nothing. To, we got nothing new to report. The case yeah, is still just, open. Yeah, it's it's bizarre. It's very, very bizarre. I'm very curious to see where, where, where this case is at, say, in like a month from now to see yeah. if like it disappears or not. But I think it's worth mentioning, at least in the mini, so that maybe we actually have an ID on this guy for once. And he's as bland and middle aged white man as you could probably expect from from the Zodiac killer at this point. That might be so. the best movie about a serial killer. Oh God, that scene disturbed me. And I've seen like some horrible shit online. Which that scene? scene was still oh, well by the done. lake. Yeah, uh, the, yeah. The stabbing by the lake scene was rough. There's there's a couple scenes in that movie that are kind of just really intense. Very real. Yeah. Very realistic. Uh man. I he's such a he's such a fascinating one. Like that one, like the other killers are like, yo, that guy was tight. Like, yo. <laughs> And they were, you know what I mean? Like they, they, they straight up shout out the Zodiac killer all the time. Like, uh, remember what's his name? Clay or whatever came on Howard Stern. Oh yeah. That's he was right. Like, Yo, yeah, I yeah, thought yeah. the Zodiac was super tight. So I was trying to like do something like super villain esque, like the Zodiac, but like, you know, whatever. <laughs> God. God, people are fucked up. Not it's us a, though, Jesse, we're never going to uh, crash. Not me. You know I'm what? Murder free. As long as this is a successful and well-loved podcast, I feel like I'm good. <laughs> It's yeah, keeping you, you in check. But the minute this goes downhill, you're going to be like, we have to do something for ratings. And that's it. It's going to be suddenly just the two of you. And I'm like, Jesse's gone missing. We don't know where he is. <laughs> Jesse gone missing. We start a new podcast. Yeah. Finding Jesse. The what, only thing that to I'm going to murder anytime soon is a bowl of teriyaki beef. And that's mm. what's going to happen. I'm going to make a couple kolaches after this, dude. Oh, I'm my so God, excited. dude. All right. Mm. All right. Who's taking it next? That's my that's my true crime article. What do you got? <sighs> okay. So look, <laughs> I don't know why that okay. was the biggest side. I don't, yeah, I don't know what this is. Every time Alex starts with, <sighs> okay, yeah, you know, what, not, I, whatever. I don't even know it's what's a about wild, to happen. It's just a wild story. So this was in Ridgecrest, California. Uh, this is like in the desert of California uh, at a place called the Inyo Kern Airport. It's in Kern County. It's just a little bit north of where we are right now. The James Bond and Triple X of Los Angeles or whatever he said earlier. Uh we are yeah, just right. a little north of L.A., uh, 1 a.m., uh, September 18th. This news story is from October 1st. Uh, the 160th Special Operations Aviation Regiment, a.k.a. SOAR, uh, were on base at the airport doing a training exercise. And uh, there was a staff sergeant who was smoking at a late night cigarette uh like area like near the hangar like he just like was out doing his little rounds or whatever and he went off to smoke for a second and a quote <laughs> unknown person wearing full ninja garb approached him uh and said do you know who i am and he said i don't know who you are and he said do you know where my family is and he was like I don't know where your family is. And then the dude in the ninja outfit pulled out a katana and started to slash at him <laughs> and hit him in the phone and the leg with a katana. I uh, just, what is this man is living as Liam Neeson's best life, but like the ninja sequel. Yeah, I mean, I'm picturing like Remo Williams for some reason. I don't know why that's what I'm thinking. Like a, like a, like <laughs> super Mario metal gear solid. Uh, Do you know who I am? Just absolute confusion yeah. plastered on the man's face. Yeah, uh, the sergeant ran. He jumped a fence. He got into a building where he found some other dudes. He was like, there is a ninja outside chasing me with a katana. Uh, they locked the door, uh, called 911. The ninja got to the door and was punching and kicking the door. Uh, and uh, he like threw a rock at, and hit somebody in the head with it. Uh, and 20 minutes later, uh, the, you know, the 911 call came in said 26 people were hunkered in a hangar. Uh, One man with a katana. Yeah, hiding from a dude. Six men walked in. Dude, I don't want to get sliced by a katana. <laughs> uh, but the police officer showed up. They found the ninja suspect on a road nearby. He, ref he, quote, refused to follow commands and brandished the sword at deputies. They fired projectile rounds, but they were ineffective. Don't know what that means. I, I have to imagine that he sliced them in half with his katana. He's performing his ninjutsu, dude. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, he ran again. Then they tasered him. Then he dropped the sword. Then they arrested him. Turns out he's a 35 year old man named Gino Rivera. He was attempt. He was arrested for attempted homicide, assault with a deadly weapon, brandishing a weapon, brandishing a weapon with the intent to resist or prevent an arrest, uh, vandalism, obstructing or delaying a peace officer in the performance of their duties. 
a bunch of different stuff. Uh, the sergeant and the captain both required stitches, but they got cleared for duty the same day. So just a oh crazy God. thing. I just, you would think after your failed assault, or would you call it a success? You've pinned 26 men in a bunker. Are you successful or did you fail that assault? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. To be fair, the thing that's crazy about this is these guys are the guys that use helicopters to like insert seals like straight yeah. up like they are like dropping solid by. snake off at the at the mission oh god uh, it's, under the cover of darkness pinned. yeah and this ninja dude like got the drop on him so i don't I'm know how serious i played a lot of games lately where you can deflect bullets with the katana and i'm yeah. just letting you know <laughs> they think they knew that they were like shit's easy. Get inside. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> shit's, shit's easy man you would think after your assault regardless of a success or fail though you leave and you would you know take off the ninja garb all you got to do is just cut the bullets in half and you never have to take Yo, off your ninja guard. Mathis, no joke. I watched a video the other day where these cops are chasing these three guys and one of them like turns a corner and starts washing dishes like at a sink and the cops keep running by him. And I was like, that's the smartest. In, that's the smartest man that ever lived. He just right? said, and then the cops like walk back because they clearly lost the other two and they just walk back past him. And he's like, why security cameras on him he's just washing dishes like he works there oh my god dude. unreal that's genius yeah. you're some hitman level hide in plain that's sight what I'm kind of shit. you're genius. totally right if dude's dressed like a ninja just don't be dressed like a ninja no more yeah take off your fucking clothes like yeah i don't know what to tell you that's what uh oh. what's his javier bardem did in uh yes james bond <laughs> just ran into the crowd for like one second changed his clothes you can just chill out yeah Put on a car outfit. You're Walked a villain. Normal speed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hope Wild. nobody recognizes story, you as though. famous celebrity. You know? <laughs> Javier Bardem. Yeah. Yeah. Javier Bardem. <laughs> All right, Jesse. Gentlemen, let's get biblical. Ooh, Whoa, one of my, my favorite, favorite things to get. Hail Mary, full of Christ. So, the Lord is with you. The Journal Scientific reports uh, has a piece about a team that has discovered some interesting things that might relate to the Bible or at least to uh, ancient times. So Ooh. an international team was doing a study where they found that many buildings and materials, this is in Jordan, in the Jordan mm. River Valley, uh, they found that many materials and pottery shards and things had been melted into glass. Mud bricks had heat bubbles. There was indications of high temperatures and they were just like, what the hell is this? There is high salinity in the soil in some areas. And um, the theory that they have crafted based on studying the soil and studying the time and all that stuff is that um, the biblical sin cities of Sodom and Gomorrah yeah. and possibly Jericho since they all okay. happened roughly the same time. No one really knows because of, you know, it's all written after the fact. But yeah. apparently they could have been destroyed by a cloud burst meteor that incinerated all 8000 inhabitants. Uh, oh. The study finds no a, fucking way. A giant space rock exploded over the town roughly 3,600 500 3,650 years ago creating a fireball scientists say the same event might have even caused Jericho's walls to tumble down which is 20 miles away the cosmic calamity laid waste to the Jordan River Valley shore raising a huge 100 acre city to the ground they have that evidence uh, it also exterminated other cities and multiple villages it would have left no survivors oh god detonation was roughly 2.5 miles above the ground even at that distance, the blast created would have been like a 700 mile shockwave. 700 mile. How many times shockwave. That even no wonder they would have seen it as an act of God. Yeah. Like, yeah. Who says it isn't at that point? Yeah. When it's true. a fucking explosion that glasses 8,000 people in one second, <laughs> who says that's not an act of it God? It would have leveled buildings. None of the 8,000 people would have survived, like Alex is just saying. And most people would have been just like vaporized and melted. Professor Salt. James Kennett likens the extraordinary event to Tunguska. With the 12 megaton meter yeah, exploding with all the trees and, knocked over. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I think he says, I, I think the main discoveries is shocked quartz. These are sand grains containing cracks that form only under high pressure. We have shock quartz from this layer. That means there are incredible pressures involving the shock of quartz crystals. Quartz is one of the hardest minerals. This is very hard to shock explains Kenneth. 
Mm. Uh, the fireball also explains the high, uh, the unusually high concentrations of salt in the basement layer, which uh, reached 25% in some samples. The salt was thrown up due to the high impact pressure. It was redistributed in salt rich crystals on the, you know, like local shores, like places like the Dead Sea, maybe, right? Wiping out other communities across the region. They also, uh, again, go into the fact that maybe it's this earthquake, this violent shaking that brought the walls of Jericho down, according to biblical text. Uh, also, one of the things they they say is like, look, the whole story about Lot's wife turning into a pillar of salt. It may be that this dude tried to run away from the calamity and his wife was just one of the people that got caught up and like vaporized. Um <laughs> What in the world? Dude? The researchers Wild. believe the disaster generated the oral traditions that inspired written accounts in the book of Genesis. It might have also led to the story of burning in Jericho in the Old Testament book of Joshua. And it is, you know, it's incredibly cultural important Sodom, to the entire area. Gomorrah and Jericho all aced at once. And then he says yeah. one of the things that is super interesting is that the high salinity, the salt in the area, there is a period of time known as the late Bronze Age gap in Get which the fuck like, out of here where you're going to tell me this lady turned into a pillar of salt. No, <laughs> like, like honestly, I mean, like, that's what the guy says. He thinks like she lot turned around and like saw his wife vaporized by the explosion and he managed to get out like that kind of thing is what he's thinking. But but one of the things that, that they're uh, that they're saying is there's this thing called the late Bronze Age gap, which is like during this weird time period in the history of the Middle East. Cities were just abandoned, like populations dropped from tens of thousands to like nomads. And it's kind of weird. No one understands why there was no fertile ground. People were forced to leave the area for hundreds of years. And then there was an there was resettlement back there. It appears again in the Iron Age 600 years later. And so they're saying it's probably this like a freaking nuclear bomb going off. And then everyone came back there slowly over time. Yeah, I mean, that would make sense. Man, you want existential fear. Asteroids keep me up at night sometimes. We just had one. There's literally nothing by. you could do. Here's the thing. No, you can't. You can't. Nothing you could do. So there's no reason to worry. Like an asteroid. True. We we see, what is it, like 10% of the night sky is what we're looking at? Yeah. Yeah, something like there's that. There's absolutely no way we would know. So like, look. There's very few places on Earth where you can see well, stars from horizon to horizon. Yeah. we. I mean, we have scientists that track a ton of asteroids, but we had one pass in mid-September. Yeah mid-September this year that came from the direction of the sun. And since it came from the direction of the sun, we couldn't see it. And it came way closer than they expected it to. Um, it was traveling like fast. It's Welcome crazy. to space, kids. I know, <laughs> There's man, only so much you can do, right? Yeah. yeah. So you literally can't this, worry. I was thinking about no. this girl that was like texting her friend uh, on AIM. And then all of a sudden, uh, her friend stopped getting messages from her. So she went to go check on her. And a boulder fell from like, the mountains and like crushed just her and her computer. Like, bam. Oh like, my God. Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing you can do about that. Yeah. That's yeah. Just, no, it's just, it's over. Like you're done. Yeah. yeah. Done. Crazy. Well, on that, everybody, thank you guys so much for listening to this uh, mini. So next week is mini. So 69. Ooh, Bring yeah. your best I'm so, mini sex. sodes. I'm we'll, so uh, ready. We'll, we'll treat your ears next week. And until then be good, everybody. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Hey guys, it's Mike, and I'm losing my voice again, because I don't know when to stop actually trying to work and let myself rest. Now I need cough drops. Luckily, thanks to Honey, who's sponsoring the episode by the way, I can buy stuff like that online for free. If you don't know what Honey is, well, it's pretty straightforward. Thanks to Honey, you no longer have to manually search for coupon codes online. It's a free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart and it supports over 30,000 online stores that range from gaming and tech to popular fashion brands and even food delivery. All you do when you're shopping on one of your favorite sites is as you go to the checkout, you'll see Honey drop down with an apply coupons button. All you do is click that, literally wait just a few seconds, and anywhere on the internet Honey finds a working coupon for you applies to your purchase, and you save money. Easy as that. Just like me saving money, buying things for my throat because I just, I'm losing my voice, dude. It's not a good thing. And you can add honey to your iPhone too. Just enable it on Safari and you can find savings while you're on the go. Listen, if you don't already have honey, you could be straight up missing out. It's literally free and installs in a few seconds. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this podcast. 
I'd never recommend something I don't use, I promise. So get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash chill. That's joinhoney.com slash chill. Thanks again to Honey for sponsoring the episode. Hello, my little chilluminots. <laughs> this is the pro- <laughs> sure, see, don't shake your head. This is the appropriate episode for this. You Should know what? Like You're right. What a fool so- I... Hello, Thank you. my little... Should we be like... <sighs> <laughs> it is Minnesota 69, finally, the long awaited. We've been talking about this for weeks now. We've hyped it up too finally, much. I'll be real with you. We hyped it's, it up way too much, but it's still exactly, <laughs> it's still exactly what we says it is, which is just an it is. Yeah, NSFW episode about sex and mysteries. So and I think we all have sex. the same exact zone in our heads, too. <laughs> yeah, I think we do. Uh, you want me to start it out then? Yeah, Jets? take, I'll it, start it, take out. it away. Take us away. Guys, I think you guys need to know there's a woman out in the UK that is doing something I think most of us wish we could do. Not, oh, not yeah? only is she just having, yeah, she's not only is she just having sex. Already a big. But she's having yeah. threesomes. Oh, her, threesomes. Threesomes. Her, her husband, and God himself. Yo! Whoa! Whoa! God <laughs> himself. <laughs> now you're playing with power. Whoa, you know that what I'm saying? That is a pool. <laughs> that and is. I apologize. I, she's not from Britain. She's from Colorado, but I'm getting this from the, the I'm getting from the British. I'm getting from the British news magazine, so I got a little confused. Everybody, everybody in the you UK were was way like, off. Whoosh. I was off. This is a woman in Colorado. It's a woman in Colorado, yeah, but it's from a British like news. I don't know. The Americans were like, God damn it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I know. I know of people overseas who are marrying pirate ghosts and like ghosts of old lords getting ready and to like have ancient Egyptians, f- families but, with Bigfoot. Only people in America would be like, uh, yes, I'm having sex with God. I'd fuck that's, that's God. Strictly let's, an American let's, thing. let's go through this article and let's just see what this is all about. Nita Marie is 45, by the way, and she admits that her husband wasn't always aware that the Lord has joined them in the bedroom, what? but insists that they get it on at least twice a week with God. Twice a week. Insists? She, you know what? The husband's like, yeah, 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 whatever. It works for me. Yeah, yeah, whatever. He's fucking here. Twice a week. <laughs> Hell yeah. All know, right. Yeah. Nina Marie, who's also an OnlyFans model, says her sex life is now the best it's ever been. She, I mean, she it says she's better been, fucking be. <laughs> um, she, uh, she says that, quote, she's experiencing heaven. And every time she invites the Lord to join her in her bedroom, uh, in her in her in her bedroom with her husband and that he does. She says that they at least do it twice a week and that from the woman from Colorado admits her partner isn't always aware, uh, but insists that she can feel his presence even if he doesn't show up in physical form. Saying a prayer before they get down to business, Nita says it has improved her orgasms and her sex life is now the best it's ever been. So this is just well, kind of like Jesus is my co-pilot kind of stuff. I, I guess so. She says it's a, she claims it's threesomes, though. When, quote, when you invite God to be a part of your sex, uh, of, rather, be a part of sex, you change the act from something purely physical to something sacred and spiritual. It's very I've sex been, positive. I got to hand it to her. I've been asking him to join me and my husband since the very first time we made love. There is nothing more fulfilling or satisfying than when you experience God's love for you while pleasuring your partner. <sighs> it's weird, first of all, that she has to say that, it, you know, it takes God to enter the bedroom. To have sex be something more than purely physical, you'd figure if you're having sex with your husband, that's there's physical. hopefully like a deeper connection yeah. as well. Yeah, beyond exactly. Just the physical. You don't need God to make it more than that. But hey, you know, I, if that's what she needs. Do you think God's like, oh, shit. You think God you likes serious? only missionary. Yeah. You think he's a missionary only guy. He's an evangelical guy. More like. <laughs> <laughs> evangelical <laughs> position. Yeah, <laughs> evangelical positions you? where you stand in front of a thousand people and they each pay you five hundred dollars. I'm choking and dying. <laughs> yeah, you got Jesse good with that one, dude. He's dying. There's there's a follow up though to the to Nita Marie. Oh, she let's also, see where this goes. She also yeah, go ahead, claims. Go ahead, go ahead. No, you take it away. Have you seen this? What about her OnlyFans? Uh, well, let me see here. Does it? I don't think it says. She, I, mean, I was about to go through some quotes, so no. I'll, I'll just add to this. She says that the reason why she has an OnlyFans is because that is what God wants her to do. It is her divine mission to empower other women to embrace their sexuality, and God is asking her to do this, and so that is why she has. God in the bedroom, so he could be part of the OnlyFans page. Chill. So really, yeah. all right, God's fifty percent owner in this OnlyFans page. 
Chill, wow. sell out, boo. Yeah, <laughs> sell out. <laughs> he does, yeah, I have it here that she said that previously she hit the headline for saying God told her to carry on stripping, referring to the model's OnlyFans career. Yeah, so God's all for it. You know, and I'm glad that honestly, though, I'm glad God is like a sex positive person. That's it's very good, chill least. of God. Yeah. Yeah. He's really got, and he's really come a long way from the pri- salt. Yeah. Uh, she says, I say a prayer in my head or out loud. It makes no difference. My husband doesn't always know when I ask God to be part of our lovemaking. He would never mind, though. The best way to explain what it's like experiencing God while having sex is a feeling of pure love and fulfillment. I feel like you should get the husband's consent here. If you're having a threesome with your with your husband, and he doesn't know he's having a threesome. That's you should consent. It Ask doesn't for the sound consent. like she's really saying like I'm calling him up on his God phone and and inviting him to come stick his penis Prayer, in my vagina. His God phone, all right. <laughs> I guess I just Some, feel she says yeah. sometimes she keeps making yeah. it seem like a little <laughs> bit says, more just like you know he's right there with me. That's when he was carrying me. Yeah. <laughs> she says, sometimes I set an intention for something I want to manifest into my life before I have sex. And by asking God to be present, it means you're more likely to be able to manifest something that dream, manifest that dream into reality. So she's literally doing sex magic with God to manifest, which just sounds like ritualistic magic. This is just like she's those like, people who say their pets can like tell them how they feel through psychic vibrations and shit. And they're just like, yeah, yeah. He, I swear he said it. He's tired. He needs, he needs his, he needs his, he needs his little bones. He's tired. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, God yeah. said he was there. He said he loved it. I love having sex with God. <laughs> she finishes by saying, whenever I feel him with us, it's always the best sex. So intense and full of passion and love. Everyone should try inviting God into their love making at least once. I'll You'll do be it. opening yourself up to experiencing heaven. I'll do it. I'll see if I can. I'll see if he's yeah, down. What is it? And episode 69.2. I literally uh, genuinely will take the time to reach out to God next time I'm making love and see if right. he wants oh, to join. I, I'm super excited to hear. And I hope he responds. Honestly, I'm going to try it for real. Fuck it. Yeah. I'm going to try it. All right. I, I, I'm eager to hear. That's my story, though, boys. Nina Marie. Nina Marie. She's three something with God. Take it. You can take it from here. I don't care who takes it. Well, speaking of people who are having sex with things, I want to bring up a very famous what? story and then I want to go into a couple other not so famous stories about this thing. Everybody remembers uh, the late Anna Nicole Smith. She was like a very famous model and like reality TV star. Sure. Died of an accidental overdose. Yeah. Uh, and stuff. Uh, very sad story. Um, after the death of her son, it was like brutal. But before that, she was like, you know, like almost like a playboy type personality, like, you know, hustler magazine type, like boobies out type of personality. Um, and there's a really famous clip uh, of her from FHM where she says, quote, a ghost would crawl up my leg and have sex with me at an apartment a long time ago in Texas. I used to think it was my boyfriend, and one day I woke up and it wasn't. It was like a spirit, and it woo went up, and I was freaked out about it. But then I was like, "Well, you know what? He's never hurt me, and he just gave me some amazing sex, so I have no problem." It was not a dream because it was happening every night. I told my boyfriend, and he didn't believe me. Of course, men. <laughs> All right, before we get into what would you believe it or not, yeah, All right, boys, you find out your lady's banging a ghost. She tells you. Are you cool with it or are you not cool with I'm it? I'm cool with it. I'm cool with anything she wants to do. Jesse, you, you, if you find your girlfriend sleeping with a ghost, do you think that you would you see that as being cheated on? Am I? Is this a committed relationship? Yes, this is a committed relationship. Have we established rules beforehand? Have we had a conversation beforehand. Like if a ghost has sex with me. And no, it's there's no conversation out of my control. beforehand. It, well, this is important because if we have like some established rules, like, you know, if you can have a, if there's like one celebrity that you would have sex with, who's that celebrity? Or if a ghost comes in and like, you know, has sex with you like Ghostbusters or like all that, if we had a conversation, totally fine. But if we're like, Nine years in and we're married and we got kids and she's sleeping with the ghost. I'm like, you know, I'm be upset. I'm be like, really? What's this ghost's name? What if she was cool with you getting your own ghost? I let's be real. I know where I stand on the ghosts wanting to bang list. I'm very far down. I'm not that high up on the ghost wanting to bang list. 
no, no, I'm just not. I'm just not like <laughs> out of all the people a ghost could bang. Yeah. Ghosts are not oh, coming you, they're for They're not me. trying to come visit. Okay. I get it. I get it. And so I'm just like, I would want to know, like, who is this ghost? Is he in our home? Did you invite him over? What is this ghost deal? Why is he into you? Is this a long term <laughs> thing? Is this going to keep happening? I so would want to know these questions. I would have so to like, you don't believe she's going to. You, you don't believe in Sorry, ghosts, but you still be jealous she's of gonna one? die and be. Well, I might be jealous. Well, of course I'd be jealous of a ghost. Are you kidding me? The, that guy gets to do the one thing I want to do: have sex and then leave. It's it's like uh, <laughs> when you get jealous of the vibrator. You're like, fuck that guy. <laughs> yeah, but except yeah, one day guy, she's going to die and become say, a vibrator. She's going to die and become a ghost, and then you got to deal with like ghost out. relationship That's problems. True. I know. That's true. Then then I die. Go to heaven. Right. Now she's dating that ghost. And I'm not gonna, I'm not okay with it. All I'm saying is, you're telling me that I gotta sit here and listen <laughs> about your problems, but that ghost is getting it for free that he can like go and you know the ghost is gonna be better than any of us. It's got infinite stamina, it can float. I'm just like it saying, can take frankly, it's it does a lot about well ghosts. With me. I just I gotta say, <laughs> we are making we're making a lot of ground rules uh, uh, about ghosts out of willy-nilly right now. Uh, I'm just telling you what I think yeah, is. I'm just happen. saying, if a ghost is banging my wife, unless we establish beforehand that we are in an open relationship where you can bang ghosts, yeah, I think it's a little much. I, I hear you it's loud a and clear. I, I hear you loud and clear. I feel like if 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 the way I found out ghosts were real was because uh, <laughs> my girlfriend said she was having sex with one, and she was, I would just be like, I don't think I would even have the same. I think I would be fine with it. I think it would just be, I would be gobsmacked. <laughs> uh, but you know me. I, I, I would a, be, uh, uh, here's the thing. You might be right, Alex, because I would be like, you know what? She had all these living people to choose from. And she, and like, she was like, you know what? I'm gonna sleep with this ghost. And I would be like, you know what? I'd sleep. Here's the thing. I'd, I'd sleep, sleep with the ghost, ghost too. Yeah. If a ghost if showed ghost up, I'd bang like, that ghost. I'm real. No questions asked. Now you know You're ghosts right. are real, oh, no, but also you have to have sex with me. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, you're right. You got me there. I'd be like, mm. yeah. Uh, but you <laughs> no, know me. Man. I'm a, I'm a, uh, a guy who likes to not just say something, but make sure when sure. I say something, that I'm going to go find a lot of other evidence of people saying similar stuff. What, you know what I mean? are you about to tell us? Uh, <laughs> so I got a list of some other celebrities who have said they've had some sex with ghosts. Uh, the Excellent. first one, the first one is Lucy. Thanks to ButcherBox for sponsoring this episode. And it's time to get going with their grilling lineup here at ButcherBox because listen, it's July, it's hot, your grill's out, it's begging to be used. It looks to you with a drooling cast iron skillet and says, daddy, grill on me. And all you wanna do is get those delicious succulent meats and throw them right on that grill and grill those succulent meats. If you don't know what ButcherBox is, ButcherBox is the subscription service that delivers high quality meats and seafood directly to your doorstep. You get to choose from a carefully curated selection of 100% grass-fed beef, free-range organic chicken, wild-caught seafood, and more. Every month, ButcherBox ships a curated selection of high quality meat right to your home, and it's the bacon that does it for me. It's thick, it's juicy, and mm, does it smell good when it cooks in the morning after I'm able to get myself out of bed because God, I'm so tired all the time. And if you're in the continental US, you get free shipping. No antibiotics or added hormones, packed fresh and shipped frozen for your convenience so you can save time on your next grocery trip. And you can now get summer sizzling started with this special butcher box deal for our listeners. Free bacon for life of your entire membership plus 10% off. All you got to do is sign up today at butcherbox.com chill and use code chill to get one pack of free bacon in every box for the entire life of your membership, plus $10 off your first order. Yeah, that's butcherbox.com slash chills and use code chill to go claim that deal right now. Uh, who said she was trying to nap on her futon and quote, some sort of spirit came down from God knows where and made love to me. It was sheer bliss. I felt everything. I climaxed and then he floated away. It was almost like what might have happened to Mary. That's how it felt. Something came down and touched me, and now it watches over me. That's Lucy Lou from uh, <laughs> Elementary. Yeah. Oh, uh, you went with Elementary? Wow. Yeah. That's, I think that's her most recent thing. That's, that's, Lucy is Lou that still on from TV? The most recent and most famous, obviously, yes. 
Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's the only thing I've ever seen her in. Uh, just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so another guy who's had, it's not just ladies who have sex with ghosts. Uh, Dan Aykroyd, who famously of got a blowjob, who famously got a blowjob from a ghost in a deleted scene from the Ghostbusters. Deleted? I When I watched it on TV, that scene's in it. Well, you should watch the deleted version. Uh, and then uh, <laughs> uh, he, maybe, he, maybe one time, he one time said, here's a quote from Dan Aykroyd. He'd felt an unseen presence in my bed, no less, when we lived in Mama Cass's Hollywood estate. Uh, and then he That's said. That's called drugs. He said he was cuddling with a male ghost in his bed and thinking, I'm just going to roll over and snuggle up next to it. So not only did he know for sure what gender the ghost was, he was just happy to snuggle with it a little bit. It like a little, me he was little spoon. You could feel a little something getting pressed up against his little butt cheeks. Yeah, I like the feel, too. You know what I'm saying? Like, I like the vibe. You know, yeah. I'm not against yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, I'm glad. I wa- a cuddling ghost is news to me, man. That's usually ghosts are not cuddling you, you know, gently in a bed. So yeah. that's cool. Uh there's also the actress Paz de la Huerta, who was in Boardwalk Empire. Uh, and she's also the chick from the uh, video games music video by Lana Del Rey. She said that she had sex with Elvis when she went to Graceland. Quote, I went to his recording studio because sometimes the sensitive people feel him in this room. And I stood in the corner and I felt him. What can I say? I felt him touch me. Uh, I felt his spirit go through me and give me pleasure. That's what she said. Why couldn't Huerta. I have had this ever in my life? You want to have sex with the ghost I, of Elvis? I don't think any That'd of this is real. Up. Dude, so when I was like 15, I really wanted to astral project yeah. really bad. I used to read about it on forums and all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I read stories about people who'd sleep with succubus, and I so desperately wanted to like fuck what a succubus in the astral plane. What are you talking plane. about? <laughs> I like how Alex understood what I was saying at the very least. Yeah, I got you. I, you know what? You didn't want to. You didn't want to try and astral. Like I desperately wanted to astral project. I thought that was something you could do. It's wizard but shit. It's like, like Doctor Strange. Come I was on. like fifteen. You're like fifteen. Not, at like least ninth, you're honest. Grade. Everyone's like, I want to experience. You're just like, I want to bang a succubus. At least yeah, you're I was so I wanted to fuck <laughs> yeah. succubus so bad, dude. I was just like, I don't care about the ramifications. <laughs> like, who the fuck are you, like, Sinbad? <laughs> what are you saying? Like, what, what's the worst that can happen? I propagate evil spawn in a realm I, I don't inhabit. Like, I give a shit. Your honesty. You're, most people would BS and be like, I want to experience all the pleasure. You're like, look, I almost sold my soul to the devil to bang a succubus. <laughs> no, I was going to sell my soul to the devil. I wanted to astral project. You wanted to sell myself. that soul at some point. And I guarantee yeah, for powers. wieners were involved. You were like, I'm going to get me some. I swear to God, I don't care how. No, no, okay, so you want to. Okay, we're getting a little weird here. I remember reading about like the dangers <laughs> that the succubus this. could sever this is your, your astral cord. Whatever you're about <laughs> to say. <laughs> I don't give a shit. Hey, are you worried about like there's an astral cord that connects your astral body to your physical body in the astral realm and succubuses could sever that cord she while they're fucking you? She can suck it so hard that it comes right yeah, off. Yeah, it gets sucked off so hard you come to one. Yeah, and you just get severed, never able to find your way back to your body. How did That's you learn the way this information? Can inhabit your body. Where'd you learn this information? We oversold episode 69, Oh you my God, Night, like fucking early 2000s internet plus like a couple bizarre books that I found as a teenager Why? that like I could read. Why are you like this? I loved aliens and ghosts this is who i was as a kid. It's it's perfect. So, uh, all right so so we'd all bang an alien though right 100 oh, god yeah all right 100 all right uh, i'd bang okay. a werewolf i'd bang a dracula i'd bang a mummy but, I'd also, right? <laughs> but i'm gonna let you know if my girlfriend's banging an alien and she didn't tell me I'm not going to be upset that she's banging the alien. I'll be upset she didn't tell me there were aliens. I'm going to be like, like you know, yeah, I got, that would be mind You've been having sex with Glipthor 5 over here for months and you didn't tell Lip me? Five? Like, baby, I was like, whoa, that doesn't even matter. There are the aliens? Food additive. Oh, yeah, I'd be furious. Uh, <laughs> Glipthor 5 just shrugs like, sorry, bro. He's like, hey, man, bitches what? before hoes or whatever he says. <laughs> aliens are weird. Uh, he Kesha, doesn't get it. Kesha in 2012 said that her song Supernatural was inspired by having sexy time with a ghost. And then Conan was like, did you say that? Did you tell Ryan Seacrest that this song was about having sex with a ghost? And she said, oh, yeah, we went to the bone zone. And then Jimmy Kimmel a year later was like, did you say you had sex with a ghost? She was like, oh, yeah, my vagina is haunted. Wait, don't tell Ed Gein. I have a joke, but it's inappropriate. 
Uh, and then finally, That's episode sixty nine. Come on, man. No, it's it's no. very in a, <laughs> it's, look, it's, yeah, Okay, gotcha. The dirty uh, people out there know where my joke is. Yeah, I get you. Uh, <laughs> the the chick from Paranormal Activity two. Uh, she's in. Uh, sh- she was on a appearance on a British talk show in twenty fourteen. Name's Natasha Blasic. Uh, and uh, she she has she was quoted saying she had two sexual encounters with ghosts. She said. At first, I was very confused. Then I decided to relax, and it was really pleasurable. I really enjoyed it. And that as a child, I always wanted to know if there was something more to this world, and this experience did answer some questions for me. Wow. Mind am, I, am, I, am I missing something? Like, do I need to figure this out? Like, is there, do I need to find these horny You're missing ghosts? nothing. This is drugs plus not wanting to admit a sexual experience. There's no way. Yeah, There's that's no also way. where my brain went. Why did she say, like, why did Anne Nicole say that it crawled up her leg? That's the thing. That's one of those details that I'm like, it's so weird that it can't be fake because like, who the fuck would say that if they were making it up? Why would you make up the detail that the sex ghost crawled up your leg? That seems so weird. Because people know, man, are weird. Listen, I would love to listen. We've got a week before the live show. We talked about a man who literally wore people. I'm not. Yeah, like, true. I, you couldn't convince. Like I'm convinced people can just be weird. It's true. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong about that bit, at least. <laughs> yeah, true. We can oh, all but agree. We're in a week. If a succubus out there wants to fuck me prior to the live show, I will what? tell the story. No, on the live no, show. no, don't Free do content. that. Don't do it. You There's say 21 that. Plus. This is L.A. There will be someone who shows up like, I'm your succubus. I'm, I'm succubus. It has to be while I'm still here in Texas. It has to be an actual succubus. I don't want, I don't want to meet anyone don't else worry, in LA. I'll be your succubus. No, no. If anyone out there is who's listening is a succubus, hit my boy Mathis up. Don't do Please don't. Astral, astral project into my dreams. Don't, Let me know. Don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Jesse. Well, it's time to bring us got? back to reality. Oh, the ghost gravity. Oh. This ghost's camming me. (laughs) Well, gentlemen, ladies, I want to talk to you about our history. As you know, Neanderthal and Homo sapien were different. Yes, Mm -hmm. we all know that to be true. This is, yeah, this is well established. And in the end, Homo sapien thrived and continued and then Neanderthal disappeared. Yeah. However, there was a time period 45,000 years ago where both existed. Yeah. And during that time period, according to a new study, Neanderthal and man boned down yeah. frequently. Yeah. Hell yeah. Get it where Frequently. you can. Frequently. And so there is there like t- a liger? Pretty much. Yes. They're saying that there are many uh, samples of DNA and bodies found in that weird window that contain high levels of Neanderthal DNA with human or homo sapien DNA. And that's sick. That is if there's any human ligers that I know today. Well, here's the thing. There have been studies about things like 23andMe and all those different, you know, DNA things where some people are getting back information that says that their body contains like 0.04% Neanderthal DNA. And whoa. Yeah. And that is because they are probably the like distant, distant relative of that bone fest 45,000 oh, years ago. A sexually woke <laughs> homo sapien caveman. And all I'm saying is just go online, look up like Neanderthals versus he, like homo sapien humans and look at the difference versus. Oh, I see. And all I'm saying <laughs> is the, 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 <laughs> don't look. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was uh, one species would win that contest. But if you just go look, they, they you know, they kind of have like a different vibe and it did yeah. not matter, though. They boned down Neanderthals interbred with all the groups of peoples because there's more than just Homo sapien. There were like all these like Homo erectus and all, like all these other things which are 
Neanderthals just boned down with anyone. They did not care. <laughs> and so their it's DNA red. is in like a lot of different people. Uh, ancient DNA they have from like a tooth and a bone fragment. It's radiocarbon dated to about 46,000 years ago. And they're like, yeah, there's 4% Neanderthal DNA in there. Um, That's crazy. Yeah. And so they're saying that as we move forward into the future, it's less and less, obviously, because they cease to exist. But in many people, it is still in their like core DNA structures. And um, that's one of the weird things about history is that even back then, people were freaks. They were like, oh, so when you hear us be like, would you bang an alien? Imagine back then they're sitting around the campfire like, ugh. Would you big Neanderthal? <laughs> and he's like, already did, bro. They're he's like, like fuck yeah, yeah bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Would you bang a Neanderthal though? Um, yeah. If one existed out of nowhere. Yeah, if one yes. existed today. In a yeah. heartbeat. Yeah. 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 All right. It's cool. the same reason I imagine people want to sleep with celebrities just to say they did. Can you like, imagine the story? Yo, technically my kids will have Neanderthal DNA. <laughs> like, bam. <laughs> we should get DNA tested. Maybe one of us is part of Neanderthal. I, I like mean, had a, I had one possible. of those tests on my counter for like two years and I never took it. I need I need to do that. <laughs> well, now's the time. Yeah, it like expired. I have well, to get a new one. Episode or say mini sode sixty nine, boys. That's it. If, that if was you're not our, thinking honestly, about fucking good. right now, I don't know what happened. I'm sorry. I got a goddamn freaking post on the Reddit that said, "Oh yeah, me and my girlfriend definitely boned down to your podcast." By the way, Yo, it's great background. Are you noise. are you listening right now? Ooh, to are the mini you, ooh, Hey, are you listening right now to episode 69? I want you to know that. You guys know what I'm going for. Yeah, no, of course. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, I want yeah. you to know that you and your 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 girlfriend, uh, one day, if you keep this up, oh, yeah. we'll probably get married. <laughs> and then you'll grow old together. Oh, no. What are you doing to them? Why are you doing this? <laughs> And why are you killing, just, killing the, oh, why are you, why yeah. are you Ed gaining the vibe? Don't do that. Walk down the <laughs> aisle holding hands. No. And then you'll say to yourself, I love you. And then they'll say, I love you too. And then you'll have kids. And no. those kids will grow up to hate yeah. you. <laughs> right. That's the ultimate nightmare. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're having oh, so much God. sex, the kids will be like, stop it, mom How and dad. You? You're so weird. And then they'll like, mom, hate I want you. a sandwich. Yeah. And you'll say, and then, Jesse, oh, yeah. Mathis, Alex, be quiet. Because in this, in this, fan, in this fantasy, now. in this fantasy world, you named your kids after us because we were there. Right, 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 right. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you were listening to our podcast yeah, we when, you, when you made the children. Jesse, so we're still we there. Obviously, Mathis is the middle child. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Alex, the oldest, no, first of all. no, no. Uh, Mathis is the middle child. <laughs> Alex is the is the older child who's just like over it but has to do basically raise all the kids and i'm the youngest the troublemaker who like you know definitely plays chiluminati podcast and it weirds you guys out yeah so I'm like, like what's Jennifer going on Lawrence. in that room it's like it's my favorite podcast what are you and your <laughs> girlfriend doing in there nothing we love this podcast and you then you see yourself in us yeah Gross. I didn't want to be there, but now we're here. Yeah, now Appreciate we're here. It. Hey, thanks for right, thanks for boning the podcast. It. Happy episode 69. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> Goodbye. Oh God. <laughs> I saluted. Couldn't see it, but I saluted. Okay. Thanks to stamps.com for sponsoring this episode. And we all know time is money, friend, and we love time and money and i wish i could make more time like i can make i don't know where i'm going with this other than that i just don't like the fact that i only have 24 hours in a day it just feels like not enough time especially when i have to spend so much of them sleeping so when i'm up i want to be as efficient as possible and one thing that's not efficient is going to the post office so why are you still taking time out of your day to go to the post office when you could be using stamps.com like me instead stamps.com makes mailing and shipping quick easy and cost effective. And for more than 20 years, Stamps.com has been indispensable for over 1 million businesses. Stamps.com gives you access to all the post office and UPS shipping services you need right from your computer, along with discounts like 30% off USPS rates and 86% off UPS rates. Streamlining your shipping process with Stamps.com is super easy to use with their really simple software. All you need is your regular computer and printer, no special supplies or equipment. You're up and running in minutes, printing official postage for any letter, package, 
anywhere you want to send it. Plus, Stamps.com seamlessly works with Shopify, Amazon, Etsy, eBay, and more. So stop wasting time and start saving money when you use Stamps.com to mail and ship. Sign up with promo code CHILL for a special offer that includes a four-week trial, plus free postage in a digital scale, with no long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to Stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page, and enter code CHILL. Now, back to the episode and hopefully my voice. Hello, my little Chaluminauts. Hey. Oh, welcome to. Hey. Yeah. I got to say that in person this week. It was fucking great. It was. I mean, that's one I, way of looking I at got it. Chat. The, the chat. Fuck the audience clap. So that's you called the matters. chat. You, you called the audience you chat in real life. At, I did. Yeah. That was at SGS, and that's okay. That's uh, fair. Anyway, welcome to the Chill Mini episode 70, 70th mini sode. Uh, I don't know what you boys have brought. I know Jesse's got like he's like torn between his stories. Uh, yeah, he's got some good like, stuff. Like I found two, and I don't. I mean, look, I'm good for next time too. Oh I'm damn, dude, great. you're covered. Here, I'll start out by revisiting something that we've revisited multiple times. Mult- each one of us has brought to the table under different circumstances. Okay, back to the L.A. Jetpack Man, everybody. We love to we love to find out more about this man, and I love how far the fuck apart the updates are too. Right, they're this really started far apart. Pre pandemic, if I'm not mistaken, right? I think it or it was like right at the beginning yeah. or pre. It was right around. This is then, this yeah. is a this is a story across ages of time and space. So. It may so it may not even be all that exciting, unfortunately, even though the the last time we thought we knew what it was, it was kind of a letdown. This is also kind of a letdown. (laughs) Newly released footage from the Los Angeles. You were selling it so well, by the way. Sweet. I know. From Los Angeles Police Department helicopter suggests that the mysterious jetpack man spotted at LAX on multiple occasions over the last year may have actually just been an errant balloon. And here's a video. No way. The Here's same a video. notorious balloon. All right. There's All right. the balloon. All right. Let's see. Let's see. take a look. It's a video from L.A. KTLA. It's a news. The news channel KTLA. It's a Jack this, Skellington balloon. It looks like it, doesn't it? Uh, let's see. The curious case began back in the su- in summer of 2020. <laughs> <laughs> it when, really is a Jack Skellington balloon. It actually is. You oh, my fucking down. God. <laughs> <laughs> when a pilot oh, approaching the airport so reported to air traffic controllers that there was a guy in a jetpack flying around the area. This was followed by a subsequent qu- a sighting in October of 2020, as well as a third such encounter with the unidentified flying individual that took place this past July. How An could investi- that be? I know. An investigation by the FBI indicated that they suspected that the aerial anomaly was in fact a balloon, and now newly released materials reportedly released by the LAPD lend considerable credence to that theory. We believe it's a Jack Skellington uh, balloon. Yeah, it, it from, looks uh, like the Nightmare Before Christmas, nineteen ninety three. Buddha pictures. Uh, it says further and going, kind of blah blah blah. Captured in November of last year, but only coming to light this week. The footage. So this is this footage is from November of last year. The footage, as well as some photos, show what is clearly a sizable human shaped balloon floating at a high altitude above the city of L.A. Specifically, it is believed that the object is seven is a seven foot tall inflatable, but depiction of the character Jack Skellington from hit the hit film Nightmare Before Christmas. So, yeah, this is this video. This footage is from November, kind of a little after the October sighting, I guess. Uh, the FBI, FBI says that their investigation in the series of events has failed Unreal. to yield any additional jetpack man witnesses, nor any video footage from the three encounters. That spawned headlines. How do you have uh, three encounters with Jack Skellington? That would be so I, funny. It's only Christmas Never. and Hall. That's Christmas and Halloween. There's no other days that he's around. Yeah, but let's be, let's not pretend. People be loving Jack. Like little like sixteen year old emo kids love them. Jack Skellingtons. That's just a fact. <laughs> please please Birthday let me parties, know on the subreddit heroes. if you still love Jack Skellington. Unironically to this day. Let me know. Reach out. There are going to be more people than you possibly could yeah, imagine. Dude, I don't know what you're thinking. Yeah, it is people still love like Nightmare Before Christmas. One of the main G- things being sold at Hot Topic is like Nightmare Before yeah. Christmas stuff. All yeah, the time. I want to meet these people. How? Why? How do you find out? They about were this? probably in the audience of the live show. How if do you find yes. out about it? Where do you guys see this movie? If nowadays? we would have started like What's Disney this? Plus, what's this? They would have jumped in and sang with us. Trust me, <laughs> right? That's what and our live would've. show should be from now on. We should just do the Nightmare Before Christmas soundtrack live sing along. What did we talk what's about? This? Our VIP, what's our this? VIP show going forward is going to be. It should be you singing it, yeah. Alex. I cannot stress to you. This once again goes to my theory. I don't believe in stuff, but like when I see it, 
and have the evidence like this, I'm like, that is clearly what that is. I would never, if you would have just told me it's Jack Skellington, I never would have believed you. But I'm literally looking at a floating Jack Skellington. He's like, Roger, Roger. (laughs) (laughs) I love this. This is amazing. Looks like shit. It looks like shit. There's no way. That's not my not my jetpack, man. No <laughs> way. He lasted all the way to July. Like he was a go- he lasted all those months flying. That's what the I'm air. saying. Like where where's the air? He's such a skinny balloon anyway. No, I think it's quite possible that just like at some point in time, Jack Skellington balloons were made. And this could be three separate Jack Skellington balloons. You think every single one of these was a different yes. version of the same Jack Skellington? <laughs> no, balloon not the same one. Go that far. The yeah, same, like the same brand, model, model, and yes, make of yeah. Jack Skellington balloon. I, I'm more of the belief that it might be a mix because we know it's a balloon, but we also a know from mix. a previous one that there was a guy with a drone that looked like a man, or it was like a fake. I man think the fake around. foam man is the answer. You're I telling me that they bowl. didn't. If if you got in the newspapers because if you're jack skellington balloon you wouldn't go out months later once you found out again. buy another one do it again come on <laughs> they definitely did jetpack man dude okay who if you are a person that is putting jack skellington balloons out into the la night to scare the shit out of people you're a hero okay <laughs> it's worked three fucking times yeah, three How the times fuck over that two years is? that's incredible you gotta look at this video man you gotta put that on the sub that is like, i will i'll put it i'm gonna I put it on the sub and like, now people won't know it what it is no context. It's no like context so at all. <laughs> He's just like beep, 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 beep. He looks like shit. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to title this really post, bad. Could It Be? Question mark. Oh, Good Lord. man. Okay, That's yeah, you guys, you guys go check that out on the subreddit from Mathis. Yeah, it's up there now. Good Lord. <laughs> all right, which one of you boys wants to take it next? <sighs> well, I have an article that's about as silly as that one. This, right. this one is from MysteriousUniverse.org. This is an article by Jocelyn LeBlanc. This is a list of all the ghosts that are said to appear in the UK in the month of November. I know that you said that the UK, there's a lot of listeners in the UK. So I thought maybe I would look and see and find. It's like ghosts that show up that are said to show up every November in the United Kingdom. So you guys oh, can okay. now since it's November, November man. Yeah, so this is a very it's, seasonal ghost. You've decided yeah. November's your month. You claim it, but that's it. So we can check out a couple of the ghosts. So for All Souls Day, every year at precisely midnight between November 1st and 2nd, apparitions of those who will pass away before the next All Souls Day will walk through St. Leonard's Church in Lancashire, England. Get ready for that. Damn. Also on November 1st, the spirit of a headless woman, the phantom of St. Juthware. I don't know how to pronounce that one. Sorry, guys. Can be seen walking through Judith Hill which is also known as Abbott's Hill towards the church in Dorset, England. And a female shadow figure can be seen near the quiet woman Inn, which she might just be reading the sign and thinking, Oh, that's where I belong. Uh, (laughs) Every November 3rd, lady Coleraine's apparition has been witnessed screaming as she jumps off of a balcony at Bruce castle in Tottenham, London, England. She's apparently attempting to escape from her possessive husband. So November 3rd is her day where she finally does it. The ghost of Catherine Howard, fifth wife of King Henry VIII, can be seen silently screaming while walking towards the the chapel of Hampton Court Palace in Surrey, England, on November 4th. Uh, On November 5th, villagers in Shebir, Devon, England, Shebir, sorry guys, don't know, turn over a big stone that sits near an oak tree. If they don't turn it over, ill fortune and disaster will come upon the village and it has been said that the devil is trapped underneath the stone. Uh, the ghost of Mr. Baker is seen every year on November 10th on the dirt track along Bub Down Hill in Melbury, Bub Dorset, England. That seems like a fake place, but hey, shout out, shout outs to you if that's where you're from <laughs> and I'm mispronouncing it. Uh, this is the anniversary that he died, November 10th. So he's that's his thing. An unexplained bell is heard ringing when the sun sets on November 11th, followed by the sight of a small ghostly army at midnight that travels through the area of Thunderfield Castle in Surrey, England, which is the coolest place I've ever heard of. Uh, the apparition of a gliding figure thought to be a nun has been witnessed on November 13th at the Royal National Orthopedic Hospital in London, because apparently there used to be a nunnery there. Uh, 
We're almost to the end. November 21st, the eve of St. Catherine, the ghost of old Coles has been seen driving a coach through a village before stopping in a river so his horses can cool down near Lee, England. And the spirit of a guard who fell asleep while on duty, as well as a ghostly woman, have been witnessed at Folksrath Castle in Kilkenny, Ireland on November 29th. Uh, And on November 30th, St. Andrew's Day. The sounds of phantom bells can be heard on Old Church Road in Romford, London, England, at the site where a church sank into the ground. Don't know what the fuck that means. I hope it wasn't too fast. Uh, (laughs) And once a year in November, it's unclear as to what night specifically the spirits of a cavalier and a roundhead, whatever those are, meet up and fight at Yule Grieve Hall in Derbyshire, England. A monk comes out of a wall from behind the bar at the Cooper's Arms pub in Kent, England. Love that. During Mm -hmm. the late hours of one November night, the exact date is unclear, and the building was once a priory where he was bricked up alive for his sins. Uh, Oh, my God. That's not even the full list. There's a full list in the paranormaldatabase.com, which you can check out. Dang. Uh, But that's that's just a taste of the UK's ghosts for November. Spooky November goes. Yeah. So I hope that if you live in one of those places that I butchered the names of, that you are maybe sleeping with the light on tonight. If it happens to be one of those nights. Yeah. Set up a camera. I want to see it. Jesse, what do you got? Gentlemen, I want to regale you with a crazy thing I discovered. More importantly, it relates to turkey, which we talked about on the main episode a little turkey bit. Turkey like yeah. the Thanksgiving or turkey like the... Turkey like the... Istanbul. Yes. Okay. So, as you two know, and hopefully the general audience, if they don't know, they'll be made aware. Recently, over the last month or so, a huge leak came out of Twitch. And oh, that's, yes. I thought you were going to say of Carson, California. And it smells all like poop. of all of the money, all of the views, everything everyone on Twitch was making. Literally, the source code for Twitch hacked. Yeah, so pretty crazy. Everyone could see everything. Well, that was kind of a scandal, but there was a deeper scandal, which makes me wonder exactly why all this information was released. And this is awesome. Get ready for this. So. While digging through all the research of like who got what and who makes what money, people noticed that there were a sizable number of Turkish streamers who were streaming to no one, but making something like eighteen hundred dollars a day. Uh Oh, and they were like, well, how is that possible? What does that mean? Uh And so what they figured out is that there were like two thousand some streamers in Turkey streaming to no one accepting donations and the, and then, you know, getting all the bits. And then what they would do is then put it back. 80% of it would be returned to a different bank account. And, and they soon money discovered laundering? all. Yes. They soon discovered all of the money being sent <clears throat> through bits were cr- stolen credit cards. So people, oh there's a lot of people gosh, on, on Twitter who are messaging Twitch like, hey, I just got charged, you know, for most of the amount is 10,000 lira. So it's like, I don't know, a thousand some dollars. They're like, I'm getting charged. Yeah, I'm getting charged like a thousand bucks for Twitch. I don't even use Twitch. What is happening? And Twitch is like, we're looking into this. We promise this will be a thing. Turns out that there's a there's this like this huge sizable portion of of, uh, streamers. And Turkey who are doing this and they believe that and this is this is this is literally the information from Haberler.com, which is a Turkish news website. Okay. Nine point eight million dollars was laundered through twenty four hundred Turkish streamers in the past two years. Oh, my God. Yeah. And so there have been other um, Turkish streamers who are calling for uh, clean Twitch hashtag Temiz Twitch T E M I Z Twitch and they're demanding that uh, Twitch look into it and figure out what's going on because it's obviously affecting all of them. Especially if you live in Turkey, your credit cards are literally just getting stolen and like used to give to these people. And then the plan is they just like return it to another bank. They're straight up money laundering. 
this stolen bank account money. And um, so far, Twitch, uh, who is known to have like, you know, I don't want to say a billion. I don't know how many people you think stream on Twitch. So yeah, neither did I. I don't. Yeah. Twitch has a lot of users and a lot of streamers. I don't know how many. We'll say a million active streamers. I have no clue. At any given time, maybe. Yeah. 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 But um, thank you know, there are so many people and a lot of the, the guys in Turkey are like, look, we have no flag bearers. There's no one who can like take this over. Uh, this one guy who's been like really vocal. He's like, I'm a mid-level YouTuber. I, I, I you know, I have an audience, but they aren't huge. We need someone who's like big. And so uh, this guy with 1.7 million followers on Twitch known as Jalrain is the guy who's like, yo, I'm calling on Twitch to publicly act about this. And so Twitch said, yes, we will act on this. We promise you. And then Middle East eye.net, which is where I'm on right now. They said, Hey, Twitch, what's going on? And Twitch was like, we got it. Don't worry. We yeah, banned 150 people. And that's, they're like, what? <laughs> so, that's like 0.1% of the amount. I know. Jesus Christ. <laughs> and so they, they are trying to identify any streamers or anyone who would have engaged in this stuff, but they're just saying it's very hard to do because you know, well, this person has 50 people watching. So it's quite possible that that person did get a donation, you know, like that kind of stuff. And so I imagine it's harder than we assume, but uh, I bet you there's yeah. a lot of that going on. Like if you think about the fact that anybody with viewers can also be doing this, that's where it gets wild. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy, man. I wonder, yep. I mean, like we've been seeing, haven't we seen another big hack recently too, other than Twitch or am I just misremembering? There's hacks all the time now. If you yeah. don't have good cybersecurity, you need to get it. Like yeah. I still have, I still have so many things that I need to do. My phone is always like, Hey man, like, you know, that old, uh, login that you got, you should figure that out. Mm. And I'm like, uh, yeah. I just two factor, everything use different passwords for every fucking thing. The problem with two factor is I haven't lived in Ohio in <laughs> 12 years yet i have a phone number from ohio because i literally can't change it or i lose access to everything because then yeah. it'll be like two factoring and i'm like i, I don't have that number oh, anymore yeah. that Done. is true i'd have that to buy two ass. another phone you just gotta get a slowly new cell phone? switch everything else over to the new phone it, yep. it's madness yeah madness insanity well Thank you guys so much for uh, supporting us on Patreon and joining us for an episode, or should I say mini-sode number 70. We'll be back with 71 next week right here on Patreon. Don't you guys go anywhere, and we'll see you next week. It just wasn't Bye. as sexy as last week, you know? I wish it was yeah, as sexy as... It was I mean, the sexiest felt, one. I mean, it felt sexy to me. We could get to 69. We could get to 6,969 at some point. I'm just saying. That's possible. true. There's all, there's so many 69s that's out too, there. That's too much. That's far too <laughs> many. So 169 is coming up. Get ready. It's true. It's true. We'll it's see. Like you less then. than a year away, baby. I know. <laughs> that's that's one. Stop doing that. Less oh, than yeah. eight years away, baby. We're making <laughs> oh, yeah. it. We're, two more oh, decades yeah. and we'll get there, baby. Oh, yeah, baby. Bye. See ya. Anyway, me and my wife were sitting outside indulging on our porch one night, enjoying ourselves. I needed to go to the bathroom, so I stepped back inside, and after a few moments, I hear my wife go, Holy shit, get out here! So I quickly dash back outside, and she's looking up at the sky in awe. I look up too, and there's a perfect line of dozen lights traveling across the sky.